I've got IBS. Give us a woo if you've got IBS. <laughs> Give us a woo if you've got the kind that means you never shit. <laughs> on there. Give us a woo if you've got the kind that means you shit all the time. <laughs> always on the aisle. Did you hear that? They're always on the aisle. Got to be ready to go any time, any time. <laughs> That's the one that I've got. I'd high five you guys, but my hands are still a bit wet from before. Um, <laughs> what I've got is just quite an unsophisticated digestive system. Basically, when I eat a meal, it kind of pushes the last one out. It essentially means I shit a lot in restaurants. I was in a restaurant not long ago, I went to the ladies' loo after my meal, and in the ladies' loo were a couple of really young girls, like 20, 22, that sort of age, and they were up at the mirrors, reapplying the lipstick, chatting about boys, and I thought, oh God, I hope you leave soon. <laughs> this is about to be a cacophony. <laughs> Liking it to like a fireworks display because it always starts off like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and then dogs start barking because they don't like it. <laughs> Children must always stand well back. And the golden rule is you must never return to it. <laughs> but I always think if I ever ran a building or a venue or anywhere where there were toilets that were accessed by the public, I'd do people like me and those people who would. I'd do people like us a favour. I'd have some music going through those toilets. Maybe a little brass band in the corner. <laughs> a little umpar band, perhaps. And at Christmas, little drummer boy on a loop. pa ra pa pom pom <laughs> Actually, just before last Christmas, like the day before Christmas Eve, uh, I was in Boots and I bought myself some Anisol cream and some Rennies. And the woman on the till was very much in the Christmas spirit. And as she put them in the bag, she went, enjoy. <laughs> but I've got a friend who likes kind of vintage retro stuff. She's got one of those. Do you remember those toilet roll holders where it was the lady with the big dress? Do you remember those? She's got one of those. And I thought I couldn't have one of those in my house. Her skirt would be off and on so much. She'd be like, fucking books fizz. <laughs> oh, I love my audience. Like 60% if you got that reference. <laughs> The rest of you are too young and have got something really fun to Google when you get in. <laughs> oh, but I uh, mentioned periods before. I always got a little bit embarrassed when I talk about periods and I kind of hate myself for it because it's such a normal, natural thing. It seems a silly thing to be embarrassed about. But even when I buy, like, sanitary towels or tampons... Tampons? I don't know why I said tampons. What about this? It says fucking tampons. <laughs> I don't even roll a skate. <laughs> for women who can roller skate or they're for women who definitely know which hole does what down there. <laughs> I am not that woman. <laughs> Just give me what is essentially a nappy and I'll try my best. <laughs> One thing you might not know, you know non-applicator tampons, ones that are this sort of size, they were invented so that women could put them in their hand and go to the loo in the office or the pub or wherever they are, wouldn't have to take the handbag and it was a secret nobody would know. Doesn't really work for me. I wear nighttime towels. Looks like I'm taking a fucking bag of crisps. <laughs> and a grab bag at that. <laughs> I do get a bit embarrassed when I buy satry towels. What I do now when I get to the till, I just pretend they're for something else. Oh, yeah, I'm just defrosting my freezer. <laughs> I did accidentally wash two satry towels in the washing machine once. I know, I know, they came up lovely though. <laughs> Half expected the rest of the laundry to be bone dry. <laughs> but I am uh, married, been married for nearly five years. Uh, been together a lot longer than that. You know when you've been in a couple for a while, there are things you'd happily change about each other, aren't there? Nothing serious, nothing big, nothing you'd split up over, just trivial things, things that you think, oh, if I could tweak that about him or her, they would be perfect for me. I'll give you an example. When we first got together, one of the first nights we spent together was in a really grotty B&B. There's a pair of old man's pants under the bed. <laughs> and now they're everywhere. <laughs> spill things quite a lot. He always mops it up though, unless it's water. Refuses to mop up water because in his words, it'll evaporate. <laughs> which he's right, like science is on his side. But I told my friend and she said, well, he'd be no good on the Titanic. I said, to be honest, I'm not sure mopping would have helped. <laughs> but he's also not always very romantic. Even when romance is kind of put around him, he doesn't always go with the flow. We were in a nice restaurant. They started to light the candles on the tables and they dimmed the lights. And I got kind of swept up in the romance of it and I leant in for a kiss. That's when my husband realised he needed to burp. <laughs> Ever the gentleman, 
he did it out of the corner of his mouth <laughs> and then still came back in for the kiss. I was like, you're right, Flo, let's just let that one settle for a while, shall we? And that was when I realised it had gone ever so slightly darker because what he'd done, he burped the fucking candle out. <laughs> watching you know what would be great is if you liked and subscribed i'm so needy i'm so sorry uh, and why not come and see me live and uh, the tickets are available at sarahwillican.co.uk put the kettle on and settle in